right? But this is the consolidation process, right? And I do encourage every new graduate who has federal student loans to pursue a consolidation loan, right? And here's the, here's the reasons why, right? Just in case you end up needing forgiveness, right? Or that you're going to end up hitting forgiveness under public service loan forgiveness, or, you know, your income is such, or your debt to income ratio is such that it's quite likely that you're going to hit forgiveness. Starting the forgiveness clock sooner rather than later is always more beneficial, right? The sooner you hit forgiveness, the lower your total cost and the less amount of time you'll spend in repayment, right? And your grace period does not count towards forgiveness, right? So if you graduated last week and you're in your grace period, you're not earning any forgiveness qualifying time until your loans are officially in repayment. Your grace period will never be officially counted as forgiveness time, right? So the only way to end your grace period early and force your loans to get into repayment is using a direct consolidation loan. It will also reduce the number of loans you have Right, so if we come back to this one where the person has 18 loans, right? 18 loans can be difficult to wrap your head around, right? This, the consolidation will take all of these loans and put them into a single or one or two loans total that you only have to manage that single or two loans going forward, right? The interest rate that they calculate using that weighted average calculation will be Will, you will experience no difference in the amount of interest that accrues, whether you consolidate or don't consolidate, right? So I see this is where, this is where the, the wheeling and dealing always comes in. Well, I've got one loan that's at this 7.5% interest rate. And I really want to not consolidate that one just so I can pay that one to zero and reduce my overall interest rate. It doesn't matter, right? You're not going to save any money doing that especially while you're in the lower income phases of your earning career as you're getting started. You've got better things you can do with your money than trying to target one higher interest rate loan versus just consolidating them all, having them qualify for forgiveness qualifying time, forcing that grace period to end early, and then also giving you access to the ability to sign up for the auto pay discount, which will knock 0.25% off your interest rate. Right? So, Consolidate your loans. You'll simplify your portfolio. If the pandemic forbearance period ends on September 1st and you're still in your grace period, you will start accruing interest again, right? And that interest that accrues during the remainder of your grace period will get added to your principal, which means your principal balance will, can also be higher when you enter repayment. The higher your principal, the more interest you're going to accrue over time. Whether you hit forgiveness or not, you're still going to pay more. Right, so consolidating early will prevent any grace period interest from getting added to your principal. The interest that you've already accrued during school is gonna get added to your principal no matter what, right? That's just part of starting repayment, right? There's no way to prevent that. And then people wanna start wheeling and dealing, well, what if I pay some of the interest that I accrued during school to reduce the amount that capitalizes on my student loans? Not gonna help, right? Most likely you can do better things with that money than trying to pay off the interest before it capitalizes and you enter repayment, right? So consolidate your loans. It also gives you the opportunity to choose a new loan servicer. This is the only chance that you're gonna have to choose a new loan servicer, right? So generally speaking, right? Now Mohila is kind of new to the list, at least our recommendation list, right? They took over for Fed Loan Servicing. Fed Loan Servicing quit. So some of the loan servicers will cycle in and out, right? But Mohila is taking over Fed Loan Servicing's position because they're going to be the official monitor of public service loan forgiveness pro uh, progress. Public service loan forgiveness requires you to use an income-driven repayment plan, right? So by default, Mohila is going to have a lot of experience with managing income-driven repayment plans, right? So choose Mohila. And if you find yourself working for a public service loan forgiveness employer, they're going to move your loans over to Mohila anyway. So better to move them while you're in this grace period consolidation process now than after you've already started repayment and then there's a, there's a chance 
for mistakes to get made during the repayment process when your loans get moved from one servicer to another. All right, so choose Mohila, right? Use this as an opportunity to choose Mohila, particularly if you have Nelnet, Advantage, who used to be Navient. I'm really not seeing any difference between um, Advantage and what Navient used to be, and they were the worst of the worst, right? So they, I've already seen them providing some pretty terrible information and recommendations to people who have called, right? So I would use that as an opportunity to choose a different loan servicer like Mohila, right? So you can walk through that particular process and choose them. Now here's the list of cons, and I really have to stretch to find the cons for consolidation, but here's the, as objective of a list as I can come up with, right? It does require you to do a little bit of work, right? And I'm gonna show you exactly what that work looks like here in a second. If you put those health professional student loans and loans for disadvantaged students in there, right? They are normally considered to be what's called subsidized loans, right? Which means that they didn't accrue interest during school and health professional student loans have a 12 month grace period where they also don't accrue interest. Loans for disadvantaged students have a nine month grace period where they also don't accrue interest. If you consolidate them, you, you, you lose that subsidized feature of those particular loans, right? But in my opinion, that doesn't matter all that much because you want to get advantage of the forgiveness qualifying time anyway. And health professional student loans and loans for disadvantaged students aren't eligible for an income driven plan or forgiveness by themselves. You have to consolidate them to make them eligible. You do lose the option to target individual loans, right? So if you, again, coming back to the, I have this one loan that has a small balance and I just want to pay it off first, or I've got this other loan that has a higher interest rate and I don't want to include it in my consolidation because I want to pay that one off right? You lose that ability to do that. But again, you're not gaining any ground by leaving that out and leaving that ability to do so because you still accrue the same amount of interest whether you consolidate or not, right? And generally speaking, this hunting and pecking, paying back your student loans at different amounts with, you know, various amounts of money is not very beneficial, right? Better to pay what your income requires that will either extinguish your student balance or it won't, right? And dedicate the remaining funds of your budget to more useful areas of your financial wellness plan. 